Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about the history of Encore What. But before we get into today's video, to those who are new to this channel please feel free to click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you would be notified about the latest updates. So without any delay let's get right into the video. Angkor Wat in Siem Reap, Cambodia is the largest religious monument in the world. Angkor Wat, translated from Khmer, the official language of Cambodia, literally means city temple. As far as names go this is as generic as it gets. Angkor Wat was not the original name given to the temple when it was built in the 12th century. According to facts, it was built by Emperor Suryavarman II, who ruled the region from 1113 to 1150, as the state temple and political center of his empire. This place was originally dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu, Angkor what became a Buddhist temple by the end of the 12th century. Although it is no longer an active temple, it serves as an important tourist attraction in Cambodia, despite the fact it sustained significant damage during the autocratic rule of the Khmer Rouge regime in the 1970s and in earlier regional conflicts. Angkor Wat is an architectural masterpiece and the largest religious monument in the world covering an area four times the size of Vatican City. It was built by the Khmer King Suryavarman II in the first half of the 12th century, around the year 1110 to 1150, making Angkor Wat almost 900 years old. It was originally dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu before becoming a Buddhist temple by the end of the 12th century. God Vishnu who is one of the three principal gods in the Hindu pantheon, Shiva and Brahma are the others. Among them he is known as the protector. The major patron of Angkor what was King Suryavarman II, whose name translates as the protector of the sun. Many scholars believe that Angkor what was not only a temple dedicated to Vishnu but that it was also intended to serve as the king's mausoleum in death. The building of temples by Khmer kings was a means of legitimizing their claim to political office and also to lay claim to the protection and powers of the gods. Hindu temples are not a place for religious congregation but instead they are homes of the god. In order for a king to lay claim to his political office he had to prove that the gods did not support his predecessors or his enemies. To this end, the king had to build the grandest temple slash palace for the gods, one that proved to be more lavish than any previous temples. In doing so, the king could make visible his ability to harness the energy and resources to construct the temple, and assert that his temple was the only place that a god would consider residing in on earth. The temple complex, built in the capital of the Khmer Empire, took approximately 30 years to build. The building of Angkor what is likely to have necessitated some 300,000 workers, which included architects, construction workers, masons, sculptors and the servants to feed these workers. The site is built entirely out of stone, which is incredible as close examination of the temple. Demonstrates that almost every surface is treated and carved with narrative or decorative details. One of the first Western visitors to the temple was Antonio de Madalena, a Portuguese friar who visited in 1586. Angkor what was then effectively rediscovered by the French explorer Henri Mou in the 1840s. Mou described Angkor what is grander than anything left to us by Greece or Rome and spread the word about this incredible monument to the Western world. The French, who ruled Cambodia for much of the 20th century, restored the site in the early 1900s for tourism purposes. However, this work was then disrupted by the Cambodian Civil War and during the rule of the Khmer Rouge. Angkor what sustained minimal damage but however there are still bullet holes on its outer walls due to the battles of the Khmer Rouge regime. Cambodia gained independence from France in 1953 and has controlled Angkor Wat ever since. In 1992 the temple complex was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site 
and is now a highly popular tourist attraction in Cambodia by welcoming 2 million visitors every year. The most popular time to visit on Khor what is in the early hours of the morning which is to witness a beautiful sunrise over the magical temple. Angkor what can be interpreted in many different ways but Suryavarman too wanted to ensure that, however one saw the work, he would be part of it. Suryavarman too is depicted in statuary as Vishnu, consorting with the god, and performing his responsibilities as ruler such as reviewing his troops and holding court. The appearance of the monarch's likeness in so many different scenes, in fact, led early excavators to conclude that the site was a funerary temple. There are compelling reasons to come to this conclusion. Unlike the other temples in the area which face east, Angkor Wat faces west toward the land of the dead. Further, the bari leaves which adorn the temple are clearly meant to be read counterclockwise and, in funeral services, one conducts traditional religious rituals in reverse. If any evidence had ever been found of Suryavarman II's burial at the site, there would be no contesting the claim for it as a funerary temple but there is no evidence of this. It is possible that it was begun as a funerary temple but it remained unfinished at Suryavarman II's death and he was cremated and buried elsewhere. It is more likely, however, that Suryavarman II had it purposefully built to honor his god, and this claim holds more weight when one considers the king's religious beliefs. Suryavarman II practiced a form of Hinduism known as Vaishnavism, which is devotion to the god Vishnu above all others. Although Hinduism is generally regarded as a polytheistic religion by Westerners, it is actually henotheistic, meaning there is only one god with many different aspects. In a henotheistic belief system, a single god is considered too immense to be grasped by the human mind and so appears in a multiplicity of personalities all of which focus on a single different aspect of human life. In Hinduism, Brahma is the supreme deity who creates the world while, in his form as Vishnu he preserves life and, as Shiva, takes life away and rewards humans for their toil with death, which then continues the cycle of rebirth or leads to union with the Oversoul. Angkor what reflects the course of life, death, and eternity according to Vaishnavism, removing Brahma as the supreme god and replacing him with Vishnu. Vishnu appears to human beings in many forms throughout the centuries as avatars like the popular Hindu god Krishna whose avatar's purpose is to guide and instruct people. The most famous example of this comes from the religious text Bhagavad Gita, Song of God, when Krishna visits Prince Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra to explain the nature of existence and one's purpose in life. The temple of Angkor what is designed to fulfill this same purpose through its ornamentation which tells the story of the human condition, the imminence of the gods, and how one is to best live one's life. The rise of Vaishnavism in Cambodia was a direct result of the conflicts between the Khmers and the neighboring Champa. Suryavarman I, R, circa 1006 to 1050 CE extended the frontiers of his realm into Thailand during his reign and came into conflict with the cities of the Champa. The Champa's religion was Buddhism, which was also the faith of the Khmer elite, which was viewed with hostility by most Khmer who saw it as a threat to their faith. Vishnu, as a protector god, rose in popularity through these conflicts and the backlash against Buddhism. By the time of Suryavarman II's reign, the form of Hinduism known as Brahmanism, which favored the elite, was growing more popular in the region and Buddhism had also gained more adherence. Suryavarman II elevated the position of the common people, using religion, by decreeing the worship of Vishnu, a deity who was a protector of all, not the supreme creator aspect nor the destructive aspect but the mediator between human beings and the divine who had also proven himself a benevolent guardian. One of the most popular stories of Vishnu's kindness and cleverness in the interests of human beings is the churning of the ocean, also known as the churning of the ocean of milk, in which he tricks the demons into surrendering the Amrita, Ambrosia, which will make the gods immortal and preserve eternal order. This story is among the most famous Bari leaves found at Angkor Wat and supports the claim that the building was originally conceived of as a temple of worship rather than a funerary site.
Encore what is designed to represent Mount Meru, the spiritual and physical nexus in Hinduism which is the center of all reality. The five peaks of Mount Meru are represented by the five spires of the temple. Brahma and the Devas, demigods, were thought to live on Mount Meru and it is famously referenced. In the Mahabharata when Yudhishthira and his brothers travel to the gates of heaven, one by one the brothers die until only Yudhishthira and his faithful dog are left. When they reach the border of heaven, the gatekeeper tells Yudhishthira that he may enter for the worthy life he lived but that dogs are not allowed in heaven. Yudhishthira rejects any paradise which does not include dogs and turns away, but the gatekeeper stops him and reveals himself as Vishnu who is only testing him one last time before allowing him entrance. Stories such as this are told all over the temple where one finds scenes from the classic works of Hindu religious literature such as the Ramayana and Bhagavad Gita. The great battle of Kurukshetra from the Gita is depicted clearly as is the battle of Lanka from the Ramayana. As most people could not read in the 12th century CE, Encore what served as a gigantic book on which the important religious and cultural tales could be related visually. The temple was galleried which means it's progressed upwards through a series of galleries which gives ample room for the designers to explore the cultural, religious, and temporal history of the people. The outer gallery of the temple stretches for over 1,960 feet, 600 meters, covered in these reliefs. Encore what was designed to represent the world with the four corners of the outer wall anchored at the four corners of the earth and the moat representing the surrounding oceans. Scenes from everyday life, mythological tales, religious iconography, and royal processions all wind themselves around the facade. At the western entrance, a large statue of eight-armed Vishnu has been placed in the present day too. Receive visitors who place offerings at his feet in supplication or in gratitude for prayers answered. The central sanctuary of the temple is aligned north-south to the axis of the earth, and the Vishnu statue once stood in the center, making clear that Vishnu was at the heart of all earthly and divine occurrences. The galleries, according to some scholars, were used for astronomical observations and were built specifically for that purpose so that astronomers could clearly view the rotation of the heavens in the night sky. There is no doubt the site was linked to astronomical observances as it is precisely positioned to mirror the constellation of Draco, the dragon, which represents eternity because it never sets. Angkor what was rededicated as a Buddhist temple in the 14th century CE and statues of the Buddha and Buddha related stories were added to the already impressive iconography. As the Buddhists respected the beliefs of the Hindus who still worship there, all of the original statuary and artwork was left in place. The Buddhist craftsmen added to the intricate story of the temple while taking nothing away. By the early 16th century CE, use of the temple had waned even though it was still occupied by Buddhist monks, and it became the subject of stories and legends. It was said to have been built by the gods in the distant past and a popular story emerged that the god Indra had built it as a palace for his son and that it rose from nothing in the course of a single night. The temple was protected from the surrounding jungle by the immense moat and so, unlike other ancient temples and cities it was never completely lost. Even though local people still visited the site, it became increasingly associated with hauntings and dark spirits. The great enthusiasm of devotees who used to visit the temple, it was said, needed to be continued to infuse the area with positive energy. Once worship at the site fell off, the dark spirits, attracted by the afterglow of the high energy, moved in and made the place their home. Dark energy was now thought to emanate from the empty galleries, porches, and entranceways, and fewer and fewer people went to visit. With only a few monks to care for it, the buildings began to decay and even though it was never completely taken by the jungle, natural growth made headway up the walls and through the cracks between the stones. Unfortunately, Although Encore what remained in use until fairly recently in the 1800s as the site has sustained significant damage, from forest overgrowth to earthquakes to war. The French, who ruled what is now known as Cambodia for much of the 20th century, 
established a commission to restore the site for tourism purposes in the early 1900s. This group also oversaw ongoing archaeological projects there. While restoration work was accomplished in bits and pieces under French rule, major efforts didn't begin in earnest until the 1960s. By then, Cambodia was a country transitioning from colonial rule to a limited form of constitutional monarchy. When Cambodia fell into a brutal civil war in the 1970s, Encore what, somewhat miraculously, sustained relatively minimal damage. The autocratic and barbarous Khmer Rouge regime did battle troops from neighboring Vietnam in the area near the ancient city, and there are bullet holes marking its outer walls as a result. Since then, with the Cambodian government undergoing numerous changes, the international community, including representatives of India, Germany, and France, among others, have contributed to the ongoing restoration efforts. The site remains an important source of national pride for Cambodians. In 1992, it was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Although visitors to Angkor Wat numbered in just the few thousands at the time, the landmark now welcomes some. 500,000 visitors each year as many of whom arrive early in the morning to capture images of the sunrise over what still is a very magical, spiritual place. Okay guys, that is all for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to receive the latest update from my channel. See you soon in another interesting video. Bye.